The African elephant population has been decimated by poaching over the past 10 years. If it continues, this iconic animal could be extinct within decades. Elephants are killed for their ivory. A single tusk can fetch upwards of $4,000 on the black market. I think the realization has finally hit home that if we don't stop this trade, we are in big trouble. The slaughter is disastrous, not just for elephants, but for the stability of African nations. Almost every recent African conflict has been fueled by money from ivory. But it can be stopped. In 1989, in an attempt to save the last African elephants, the species was awarded the highest level of protection under the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, or CITES. This meant all trade in elephant parts was prohibited. It was probably the most important international legislation that has ever been done for any wildlife because it literally stopped poaching across the continent overnight. The ban was so successful that elephants were starting to really increase in numbers. But the CITES legislation included a clause. It stated that countries with well-managed elephant populations could downgrade their elephants to a lower level of protection. This allowed regulated trade and sales of existing ivory stockpiles. That was the most devastating change that could possibly have been made because it opened the doors for dual listing, which has created all the problems that we are seeing right now. One of the biggest sales of stockpiled ivory was in 2008, when 102 tons were sold off. Initially, it was seen as good news for the elephants because it raised $15 million for local African communities much of which was spent on elephant conservation. But during the same period, undercover investigators reported a spike in ivory sales on the black market. Operating for over 30 years, the Environmental Investigation Agency, or EIA, has used undercover techniques to try to penetrate wildlife trafficking gangs. They found the legal sell-off in 2008 revived the ivory market. From our investigations where we actually engage with some of the trades, we get the impression that there was a feeling when the illegal sale was allowed that, that business was back. It was okay to trade ivory again. The legal sell-off provided the perfect cover for the illegal trade because it's hard to tell if an individual tusk is from a legal stockpile or has been poached. Around 70% of the world's ivory is destined for China, where it's revered as a symbol of wealth. Intricate carvings can fetch hundreds of thousands of dollars. EIA investigators found that around 90% of so-called legal ivory on sale in China was from the black market. But once they make a seizure, the EIA need evidence that the tusks have been illegally poached. Dr. Sam Wasser has developed a novel way to prove where ivory tusks have come from, using elephant DNA. My laboratory was one of the first to develop ways to get DNA out of elephant dung from elephants across their entire range over Africa. The dung samples enabled Dr. Wasser to map the location of individual elephant herds. DNA samples from seized tusks can be cross-referenced with Dr. Wasser's database to see if there's a match. We were shocked to find that over the last decade, virtually 100% of those large seizures came from just two places. 78% of it was savanna ivory, starting from northern Mozambique up through Tanzania into the southern border of Kenya. And you could see over time how it slowly crept north. The other major hotspot was from a place called the Tritum and that was all forest elephants. Using radiocarbon dating, Dr. Wasser and his team are able to determine the age of the tusks. So we took samples from all of the large seizures that we had, and we did isotope analyses on each of those seizures, and we found that virtually all of that ivory was new ivory. This research helps conservationists know where to focus their efforts. It also provides valuable evidence when prosecuting ivory traffickers. 
Stamping out the illegal trade is not just a conservation issue. The trade is run by organised criminal networks and the money funds militant and terrorist groups. The Lord's Resistance Army in Uganda, Boko Haram in Nigeria and Al-Shabaab in Somalia have all been funded by money from ivory. But time could be up on the illegal trade. Some African countries are destroying their stockpiles to prevent them from ever being sold. Kenya burned over 100 tons of ivory and that whole cascade of events caused the price of ivory to drop from about $2,000 a kilo in 2013 to now around eight to $700 a kilo. In July 2016, President Obama's near total ban on the buying and selling of ivory in America came into effect. In December 2017, China, the world's biggest ivory market, shut down its domestic trade. Hong Kong soon followed suit. Britain, the world's biggest exporter of legal ivory, is consulting on a total ban, but is yet to implement it. Closing the last legal markets will stifle demand for ivory and remove the cover the illegal trade relies upon. If we can shut the ivory markets down globally and domestically so that we, we eliminate the demand, then we have hope to save the elephant.